Hey guys, Shurim here, and today I am going to be testing the Kawasaki Z800 in multiplayer. I won it a little while ago in its championship, which was pretty easy, and I'm assuming a lot of you guys got it as well. So I decided to test it in multiplayer and see how it was. So the rank of my bike is 966, and I have the typical bike multiplayer tune in max upgrades of 010010, and in pro kits I have 1432, just because I ran out of all the parts, as you can see here. So let's get to our first race and see how it goes. So here we are on Munich against two Porsche 959s among other cars. So this bike accelerates quite quickly even with zero acceleration upgrades, at least as fast as the 959 because he did not pass me. Now this one that's passing me now is nearly 100 rank higher than me. So he is in fact faster, but he went the long way and I took the short way. That's the thing about Munich, not too many people have figured out the best route, even with how long it's been out. It's been a few weeks at least. Going left in the loop de doo tunnel is better than going right. Also, there is less chance of trains if you go the way that I did. Now this little tiny place off to the left is a way to skip the train tracks and maybe skip some trains, at least for a little section of the track. And there, I'm not exactly sure what happened. I bumped a train, but didn't wreck somehow. And that other 959 is hot on my tail. So when supercharged, this bike can reach 201 mile per hour at this rank of 966. I believe only the Range Rover and 959 are able to do that, and perhaps the SLK Special Edition, I'm not sure. But not many other cars are able to do that. This place here does weird things with bikes. I kind of did a backflip, even though it didn't actually say I did a backflip. So one of those 959s was able to get ahead of me because of that glitch back there. However, he wrecked on the turn, and because I am less nitro dependent, I am able to take the turn faster than the one behind me. So I am ahead of them at the end of the first lap. Let's see if I can hold them off for the second lap as well. One very useful thing to do is try to learn the Munich track as well as you can, then vote it in multiplayer whenever it comes up. Because it is a new track as of this video, and lots of other people do not know the best routes and all that. And there's one person that is just still on the first lap that wrecked and then left. Now, this one is again the one that is 100 higher than me, thus he is quite a little bit faster, although not crazy amount, but he wrecked on a train. Munich is really a bike-centered track because of all the little ways that it's easier to get into using bikes, it's easier to swerve out of the way of trains using bikes, and because of all the ramps to give bikes a lot of their purple nitro stuff, as I like to call it. Without supercharged, my bike goes 195 miles per hour at this rank, which is still really good. And it drifts really well, as you can see here. It's just an all-around very good bike for a multiplayer. It's extremely stable, except for occasionally the glitches which happen in places like these. And guess what? It happened again, kind of. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is about that one place on the track but it can take this turn extremely well. It might be able to make it around without drifting just by turning, but I didn't really want to risk it because yeah, I don't do risky things in multiplayer. So we have finished first ahead of those two 959s, one of which was nearly 100 above me and the other one was still a little bit above me too. Munich is an extremely good track for bikes. Now here we have a race on the Rose of the Desert against a Desir and some other 959s. So there was a large massacre at the beginning of this race. First the Desir exploded, then one of the 959s exploded, then another one of the 959s exploded. I really think Gameloft puts random landmines in tracks. So now we have this other lone 959 ahead of us. Now the 959 at the same rank as this bike is I would say approximately the same speed as this bike. The problem comes when you face higher 959s, as this bike does quite often. That one up there is a little bit higher than me, and so he is going to be a little bit faster, as you can see. But still, he's not all that much faster. This bike is better than any other car at this rank, I would say, except for the 959 and Range Rover, and possibly the Desir. I'm not exactly sure how fast the Desir goes at this rank. So we are coming up fairly close to the end of the race, and this 959 is still holding his lead. However, this section up here is infamously lacking in nitro, and that is why the 959 is going so ridiculously slow up there. However, I ran out of nitro as well, and I had to slow down too. Even with extra tanks, this bike tends to run out of nitro quite often. So we have now managed to come in second behind one 959, but ahead of two other 959s and a Desir. As you can see, those lower ranked ones were not able to catch up to me. 
Now you may be wondering, how does the Kawasaki do against Range Rovers at this rank? Well, here are two races to show you that. This first run is against an unboosted Range Rover, and the next race will be against a boosted Range Rover. So this bike does start up faster, even though the Range Rover starts up quite quickly. And because of its good drifting, I'm able to take the inside of this tunnel without much of a problem. Now, Nevada is one of the best tracks for bikes in this game because of all the ramps on it. It's probably second only to Munich. Barcelona is another really good one as well. Because in this section here, because of all these ramps, I'm able to stay going above 200 miles per hour because of my supercharge for pretty much the entire way through here, which is really cool and can really give you an advantage if there's another car that's maybe slightly faster than you without supercharge, but slower than you with supercharge. The supercharge feature is one of the best things about bikes in my opinion. It allows it to reach a higher speed at any given rank without increasing the rank at all. Now this car's supercharge only adds about six miles per hour or so to it, but other ones like the Hayabusa that add nearly 20 miles per hour, now that's really overpowered. Check out my video about the Suzuki Hayabusa if you'd like to see another bike that excels pretty well in multiplayer. So we're coming up to these S-curves on Nevada, and the Kawasaki can take them just fine. It has a nearly perfect drifting radius, in my opinion. I have to say this is one of my favorite bikes in the game, not only because of its proficiency in multiplayer, but because it is the only bike in the game that you can actually make purple. Yeah, I know I've said that on previous videos, but it just strikes me as very strange how they'd make this one able to be made purple and not the other ones. I don't know. So this Range Rover was about the same rank as me, but unboosted. So now let's see how the Z800 does against a boosted Range Rover. We have now traveled from Nevada to California to face off against that boosted Range Rover and some 959s as well. So that is one of the most irritating things about bikes, getting stuck behind a car at the beginning of a race. So this white one here goes approximately the same speed as me, as you can see, perhaps a slight bit faster. However, it is not by much. So I went up that ramp, even though it slowed me down to give me the supercharge, which I can now use. I found that one of the most efficient ways to use your supercharge is to wait to do it too soon before ramps. So you can build up your supercharge again in that ramp, and then coming to the next ramp here, we can build up our supercharge again without it actually having to refill. We can continue using it the whole time. I hope that made sense. <laughs> and again, I've kept just enough purple nitro so that I can continue with it right after the jump without having to wait for it to fill up again. And here you can do it again. This has got to be one of the best tracks for this bike as well, or bikes in general, really. So I have now gotten into second place. The 959, or one of them, I should say, is ahead of me, and a Range Rover and at least one other 959 are the cars that are behind me. Thankfully, this is only one lap as well, so even if they are just slightly faster than me, they will not be able to catch up. It is very good practice to choose one lap in bikes all the time because of their very good acceleration being one of their main advantages, and there's less chance that fast bad handling cars will be able to catch up to you. So we beat two higher ranked 959s and a higher ranked Range Rover. Now, in this final race, you will see this car paired against a Suzuki GSX. You can't see it in the race, but it is the bike or the green little dot that is right behind me, as you can see. This bike is a lot better than the Suzuki GSX in multiplayer due to it having a lower starting rank and a higher ending rank, which is generally a good way to tell if cars will be good in multiplayer. Generally speaking, and this is not a hard and fast rule by any means, but works for a majority of cars, the more a car's rank increases from stock to max pro, the better it will do in multiplayer. Because usually then, the acceleration and handling give a lot of rating points, which in turn allows the car to reach a higher speed at a lower rank. This is just one of the many factors that contributes to whether a car is good for multiplayer or not, but it certainly is one of the primary ones. Now I'll give my general review of this bike. It is a very good bike for multiplayer, one of the best bikes for multiplayer in the game, I would say, only after the Hayabusa, which is better in that, well, <laughs> it will just give you more rating. But this bike certainly holds up very well against the 959s and Range Rovers around this rank, and can blow away pretty much anything else, except for an SLK Special 
special edition, I suppose, but let's just forget about that. I am currently a few days away from winning both the 650S and the Aranera Hacera GT, so be on the lookout for multiplayer videos of those in the near future, once I get them tuned to how I want them tuned for the video. So we have beat that Suzuki GSX, and a bunch of other cars as well. He was double boosted and higher ranked, but he was not nearly as fast as we were. So thank you all for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed and found the tips in it to be helpful, and consider subscribing for more Asphalt 8 content. And let me know what you think of my new outro, and I will see you later. Goodbye.